Let's rest and get my stuff. Just a rune arc. Speaking of which, why not? Where are you? Here you are. I went backwards thinking they were at the bottom when they're right at the top. Smithing stone fives. Nice. Okay. That's cool. Ah, hiccups. Oh, that's just like a floating piece of rubble. But yeah, speaking speaking in the context of like the 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 estusing again, right? Like throughout the game, you're talking about blood tax as a uh, not the not the ash of war, but just like the concept of like an a life tax, right? Uh, the thing that you would gain by just chugging three estus during that fight, rather than using the purifying tier, is that you could, for example, have a uh, have your like optimal buff set up on your physic so that you could kill him even faster, so that you could stagger him during that and maybe only have to use two Estus or something, right? Like, that's a strategy, that's a cool strategy. Let's go. Like, re resources aren't set in this game for a reason. Like, they're there to be leveraged and moved up and down. And I don't think the game would be wrong to say like, hey, this is an encounter where like, you have multiple options, but one of those options is like you have less resources than you normally would have, right? That's actually an interesting way of like seeing how people will play the game and uh, enforcing a different play style. Oh fuck, there's an Astle here. This is gonna be an annoying fight. Actually, no it's not, because uh, Bastard Star steals extra damage to void enemies. Never mind, this is gonna be easy. Altis tunnel. Okay. Crystallians in here. Okay. Jeez, no health. Staggering these guys is going to be annoying. Oh, bad range. There we go. Bye. Somberstone Miner's Bell, that's not bad. Now we can go try to deal with the Astol. What was down here? Did I go down here? I don't think I did. 
No, we did. It's just the start. Okay, I'm done. Arsenal Charm plus one, nice. Okay, uh, we gotta figure out where to go uh, to get this Astle. Where is he? Where, where do we gotta go? This looks like the place. Nope. Interesting that it catches him right there. Does that mean there is an illusory wall somewhere? Nope. Hmm, I do not remember what to do here. Just through here? I already tested this. Probably just up here somewhere. Yep. Nope. Not right there. Where is he at? Where are we going? What is going on? This is the mysterious hallway. Nope. Not here. Hold on, let's look. Let's just take a little peek. There's gotta be a pathway over there and then one over there. There's a second cave. Yeah, I thought so. I just wanted to look around and make sure I wasn't just missing a secret illusory wall. There you go. That's fine. Just being thorough. And then we'll go in through the back way after. That's fine. I can teleport out now. That's cool. Uh, okay. This whole area is done. Go back to Highway Junction and ride up to the other side. All right, let's move forward. It 
it's just another path up or is there a cave here? Let's check. Just another path to a, a statue of Millennia and Mikola. Amber Starlight. We needed that. This is what uh, Seluvis would have wanted for his quest, but he's not going to get it. He's a little dingus. Uh, we'll take a, look, a closer look at Millennia and Mikola's statue there in a second. But you can see Millennia has one arm. It seems to be like really decrepit. And then Mikola is there. Forever young. So... Let's read the item description on the Amber Starlight. I have a lot of things to turn in. Ingredient used in a special draft. An ephemeral sl uh, sliver that gives off a pale amber glow what remains of passing flash of starlight. If the stars command our fates, the, and then amber-hued stars must command the fates of the gods. Such is the belief that inspired the use of these shards to prepare a most special draft. Cannot be consumed by mere humans. Time Brain says, if I'm going to lose three SS card charges and I don't even know what I gain in return, then I agree with you that the transaction is not worth it. That's not what's happening here. <laughs> That's not what, what the blood tax is. So there's a boss that does a special attack that basically drains your health bar completely. And the way that you survive it is heal three times. So you can think of this as a blood tax. You get to keep fighting if you heal yourself three times, right? But there are alternate ways of surviving that attack. One of those ways is to stagger the boss. Another way is to use a physic, which is a different healing item with a special item in it. You can choose to not alter your physic and not use the physic item because your physic is also used to buff yourself and you can only choose two effects to go in your physic. So if you choose the effect that prevents him from cursing you, you lose one half of your physic, right? So the choice then becomes, do you want to heal yourself three times and lose out on three Estus during the fight, which you might not even need, or do you just want to play it safe and put the item in your physic? That's the choice. That's what makes that choice interesting. It's not just you lose three Estus. It's... There are alt there, there's a lot of damage you need to tank. Are you going to tank the damage, or are you going to do something that prevents you from taking the damage at the cost of whatever else you're using the physic for? That's the trade-off. What you gain for that transaction is the your like cool buff setup, right? Because like right now I have my physic set to restore half my FP and give me 30% extra damage for, or 15% extra damage or whatever for three minutes, right? That's very, very powerful when I have a weapon art that already does like 15, uh, 1,500 damage a hit. And then it hits nine times potentially, right? Like I can blow up a boss with that. I can build around my physic being the main way with which I buff my attacks, right? So like using this as an example, if I, uh, I have my physic right here, if I take this, now I do this, I do a shitload more damage because I buffed my magic damage using my physic. Now, if I want to use the item that prevents Moog from doing this, yeah. Time frame says, that makes far more sense, and I thought there was an item perk in the game called Thinking Juice. No, there is not. What, what Petword was saying was he doesn't like the fact that he has to trade Estus because Estus is a means for him to tank damage and make mistakes in a fight. So the more Estus he has, the more ability he has to make mistakes. That's what that is. But the point I was trying to get across to him was that it's a cool trade-off to be able to do that because it alters how you play the game. All right, I went the wrong way. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to do the Windmill Village now.
Petward just wants to be able to play the game his way no matter what and never have the game tell him no or give him any friction. He just wants to slam his face against the wall. Which is fine. That's his prerogative. The game lets him do that. And that's cool. But it doesn't matter. That that the thing is is that that isn't as cool if the game doesn't give you a choice. If the game was just throwing yourself at the wall, it's a little bit less cool than, you know, giving you a bunch of cool choices to make and then allowing you to sculpt your playstyle around making those choices. West Windmill Pasture. All right, Golden Rune. Giant Rat Ashes for when you just want a giant rat. Just the zombos over here. Uh, so these ladies are crazy. These are crazy ladies right here. Well, I'll talk about them in a second. Let's see this. Bam. Balamo. All right, so these ladies are freaky, right? They're having their little Midsommar festival over here. They're called celebrants. Uh, they are celebrating and burning bodies and doing bad stuff to people, right? They're dancing happily. And if you attack them, they all start to attack you and they get red eyes. They're like, how dare you? Bam. And now all these guys come to life. Oof. Bye bye. I do good damage now. Melted mushrooms. Yay! Navy hood. Noble's traveling garb. Twinned night swords. Oh, that's the uh, that's a that's a um, twin blade. That's a really solid infusible twin blade. Cool. Uh, so we did that. Is there anything in this little hovel? No. So the weird thing about these ladies, right, is they're like covered in blood and they're doing all this Mayflower stuff. Note the color of their flowers. It's all pink and purple. Interesting. They also have like the 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 medallion. This thing, they have like a green turtle talisman, sort of. Look at that. It's like a it's like a multi-star thing. It's not exactly the same, but they have like a flower motif going on, like a greenery and flower motif. Um, it might be really good for me to use the navy hood. Worn by expatriated royalty, such cloaks were gifted those to part on missions to faraway lands from which they would never return. But what choice did they have, having seen the guidance of grace? This uh, gives me more FP. I don't think I really need it. Yeah, it just gives you five more. Not really worth it. I do like the fashion of it, though. But that's a windmill village we want to go to up there. They're girl bossing. They are girl bossing. Yes, yes. This is the one we want to go to. But it's cool, right? Because they're they're celebrating and they're having their little cannibal ritual. They have the they have a cleaver as well, like a like a scary meat cleaver that they hack people up with. It's twisted, dude. It's sick. And there's misbegotten here, and all these people are like scared. See, they're like, no, please, misbegotten, don't kill me. 
I saved you from her captors. Now I free you with the the icy grip of death. Bye, puppy. Let's get clobbered on the head. Arterial leaf. Uh, where am I going? I saw that. Did I already look in that little spot? I don't think I did. Clearly not. There's a person living over here. Huh. Got him. That's a solid amount of damage to do on a single hit. I feel pretty happy with that. Pull up my FP a little. So what are they celebrating for, right? What reason are they celebrating? What reason could they be celebrating? Why are they burning bodies also? Why are they like killing tarnished? What's the point? Why are they doing that? Dominula Windmill Village. Let's level up so I don't lose a bunch of souls. Flasks. Increase amount. Add charge to flask. I need five golden seeds for that. Oof. All right. Um, I forgot to level. Oops. Sixty-nine, baby. Let's go. All right. So let's progress through Dominula. I like that they don't attack you until you attack them. They're like, you can't hang. You don't pass the vibe check. See? They don't really care. They're just right here. They're like, whatever. And they're all wearing those, like, this, like, cloaks and, and pretty dresses. And they have their little maypoles that are uh, covered in pink leaves. The, the Merica, uh, the Merica crucifix. And they're like, yay, this is so much fun. We're so happy. A horse is dead. Look at all these golden runes we have around. Blah, blah, blah. It's fun. Um, see, they're having a great time. We're dancing. Human bone shards they drop. I wanted to confirm something on that item description. Found by hunting those who live in death. These things don't live in death, though. They're not living in death. These are just straight up people. Like, I interrupted their dancing. They're not happy. Oh, I guess it's because the dog saw me. Oh, I hit them with the wrong flail. So like one of the, one of the other things, uh, th this is just like another example of like why the Moog fight is interesting, especially with the physic is like, if I want my physic to be good, right? And I want to keep my physic the way it is without having to sacrifice one of the slots for the purifying tier. I need to take three Estus, but I currently only have five red Estus. So, if I dedicate three to healing through blood curse, that means that I only get one Estus on top of using my mimic tier. If I, for whatever reason, wanted to use, uh, wanted to have less Estus, like if I only had four from the start, but I wanted to use my mimic tier and I wanted to have my perfect buff so that my mimic was buffed, um, right? Like that is, 
or it, so that my mimic was able to like use nebula and stuff like that too like now i'm making a choice there of like okay i need to now reallocate my flasks i need to have more health flasks to deal with this and less fp flasks but that means I, I have to use nebula better i have to use my weapon art more accurately and like not not miss attacks and things like that's just so cool She doesn't have the red eyes. She's just attacking. All right, here we are. Surely nothing crazy is gonna walk down here. Oh, look at that, a godskin apostle. They're going crazy because they're worshiping the Glomide Queen and they're killing Tarnished. <laughs> this is gonna be a hard fight. Buff. Eat the black flame. That's fine. Got this. He's gonna black flame. Gonna dodge. Oh, this might. Yeah, hit me. Oh, it did. But he got hit by the nebula too. Bye. See, my physic helped me do a lot of damage there, so it's really worth it. I can trade repeatedly because of that. God's Peeler, Scouring black, plane, uh, black Flame. I like this because we get another Twin Blade earlier, the Twin Knight Sword. And I, I don't know what this is supposed to imply, if we're supposed to believe that maybe this Godskin Apostle was like a member of the village who was trained with a Twin Blade before. Let's see if the item description tells us anything about it. Uh, and then became a Godskin Apostle and like brought it back to town, so. Uh, yeah, an attractive twin blade of fine make that prizes the chivalric way. And then this one. Unique twin blade wielded by godskin apostles characterized by its disturbing design. One end features a sickle for slicing attacks, while others boast a winding spike for boring into flesh. Much skill is required to wield this weapon due to its asymmetric nature. Um, so it's cool. It's just like, that's like an interesting little piece of storytelling. And now we, we got to the top of Dominula and uh, got a little grace for it. And we got to, we beat a... Uh, Beat a godskin. Love to do it. You love to see it. I love the little bespoke storytelling here, too, of like, this is a town underneath the grace of the Erd tree, so close to Lanedell, so close to the capital. Just a meager little town, windmill place. Like, people gotta live, people gotta eat green. It's like, it's not that crazy. It's just, you know, normal life. But maybe at some point, one of their, uh, one of their nobles came back the, the little baron of this town shed their navy cloth and and picked up a twin blade. Uh, or, or, you know, maybe they went on a journey with their twin blade, came back into town, got rid of the uh, the old one and have their have their godskin peeler now. And they brought their beliefs back to their town. Gold Firefly. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. It's so very good. I like how there are windmills just like marked on the map. I'm gonna go investigate that area next. Let's go, horsey. Oh, fuck. I'm fine. These are falls that are very easy to accidentally die from. <laughs> oh, I got excited. I thought I was going to get a celebrant sickle. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. And then here's this guy. Eek, I hear a festive melody. No, don't skin me. My hide is filthy, I swear.
So just neat. Just kind of cool. Cool little storytelling. I like it a lot. And it's it's also goes to show that like the Godskin Apostles are not just like a remnant of an old time. Like they are a threat to the gods even now. They show up even now and like are relevant. <laughs> They're still very relevant. Their beliefs are spreading as the Erd Tree has kind of abandoned everyone. What are you hiding from, dude? Yep. There we go, larval tier. Right? Yep. Monkey Duke. Somberstone five. It's not bad. Huh. All right. Where are we going? Where are we headed? Um, I already did this one. So is there any, is that anything? What is that? That's just a thing on the hill. Am I just crazy? Uh, let's see. This just leads up to lane Dell, doesn't it? I don't know if there's anything actually valuable over here. Let's check. Lightning, Great Bolt, okay. Ballista item. Is there anything over here? Mmm, that's dragon sound, isn't it? There be dragons. Yeah, like maybe I don't need to... Maybe I don't need to be over there. Nebula is so good. Any other runes that I missed? You have to go pick those up in case they're noble estocks or slender swords or whatever. Rare, rare drops from these guys. Nope. Alrighty. Oh, it's just a flower still being angry at me. Okay. Um, hmm. Already done all of that. I guess we can go over here now. Just marking things so that I remember where I'm going and what I'm doing, because at this point the map is so open that it's a little bit. Uh. Oh, oops. A little bit difficult to to fully determine where exactly we are. We are getting very close to the capital. Very close to the foot of the Erd tree. But I want to do my best to not enter Lane Dell yet. Vulgar Bloom, please. Thank you. Look at these golden ass sheep. Eating too much Vulgar Bloom, turning gold. 
All right. Oh, okay, this is a grave. Which one is this? Is that a black knife? I think that's a black knife, right? Sure is. See you later, girl. 10k souls. And we got the black knife, which is a sick, sick dagger. Very cool weapon. And what's down there? Another cemetery? Alright, let's, um... Uh, what do we want to do? I want to go grab the runes first. Oop, and a incantation beetle. However we want to call it. Here we go. Nice. Ash of War Lightning Return. Oh, there's more lore. The most important thing. All right. The routing of the ancient dragons. Godwin the Golden fought to the last, earning the friendship of dread Fortisax. So, once again, Fortisax and Godwin fought in the war against the dragons. America's war against the dragons. Uh, it turns out Fortisax and Godwin got along so well, having fought so valiantly, that they became friends. And that's why Fortisax was inside of, uh, of Godwin's corpse dream, because he dove into God Godwin's mind in, in an attempt to uh, kind of kill the corruption inside of his friend, but he was no match and got corrupted himself. Thus is the way of things. These sheep are really bugging me. Dude, lay off. Like, read the room. Itchy nose. Okay. Uh, this is on a lower level. Ooh, do I want to go down there? Sure. Bye. Bye bye. Storm Collar Church. Lightning Grease Bolt. Gravel Stone. Sacred Tears. This is really the only forces they could leave to defend this place? For real? I guess the capital probably doesn't get a lot of foot traffic, so it makes sense that it'd be lightly guarded here because there's so much else. There's like golem archers and stuff on the way up here, so. Dragon Bolt Blessing. Where is it at? Only those loved by dragons can survive the ideal of uh, the ordeal of cladding their bodies in lightning, such as Godwin, who is beloved by dragons, explicitly. Uh, let's see. I'm not gonna fight you right now because I do not care. They're just random mobs anyway. They're not like special. Let's walk back up to this uh, grave up here, huh? Why not? We are making really solid progress. My nightlight stick. The Sainted Hero's Grave. Do we want to just open this up right now? Go ahead. What does this say? Shadow bathes in light and knows weakness. 
Is that saying you use a torch? Or we can only kill things in the light? Crimson Seed Talisman. The Erd Tree was once perfect and eternal, and thus it was believed the Erd Tree seeds could not exist. But then, as the Erd Tree started to die, it started shooting out golden seeds, and that's when Merica got really nervous. <laughs> <laughs>